Now we have all the tools we need to start analyzing and even solving differential equations. And we can revisit the electric circuit we've seen at the beginning of this course as a motivation to use Laplace transform and solve that problem. At the beginning of this course unit, we looked at a specific example of an electric circuit with the capacitance, inductance, and a resistance. And now we'll assume that there was no charge and no current at the circuit at the beginning of observations. And we have shown that the circuit is described by this integral differential equation. So we're going to use Laplace transform to solve this equation. How to do it? If you don't remember, please watch a few previous videos, but I'll remind you anyway. The solution involves three steps, so it's an algorithm. Step one. Apply Laplace transform to the left-hand side and to the right-hand side. And that gives us, in the end, an algebraic equation. And we also need to use an initial condition to eliminate a constant, because it's zero, we assume it's zero. So we get an algebraic equation. So we complete step one. Now step two is we need to express an unknown function as a function of s in the s domain. So step two is find the i bar as a function of s. So we just need to do some manipulation. So let's do that. Please follow me. So we have 2s plus 8 plus 40 over s times i bar equals to 30 over s. We multiply it by s and that gives us 2s squared plus 8s plus 40 equals to 30. Now let's just divide the left and right hand side by the expression in the brackets and we have i bar as a function of s equals to 30 in the numerator and uh, the denominator is 2s squared plus 8s plus 40 or if we simplify it it's 15 s squared plus 4 uh, s plus 20. Now that completes step 2. So that's what we wanted to find in step 2. Step 3. We need to apply an inverse Laplace transform to go back, back from the S domain to the time domain. So we do an inverse Laplace transform which will give us the actual electric current in the physical units, in units of time. But how to do it? Well, one way is to use tables. But if you look at this expression, it is not in the table, not directly. So some trick is needed. So something needs to be done before we can use the table for plus transforms. What do you think it is? Well, I'm certain that most of you figured out that you need to use completing the square in the denominator. And that's correct. 
So what we do is we complete the square. And this will give us an expression i bar of s equals 15 over s plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. And that's almost the expression. Just one more step, one more operation. We need to have 4 in the numerator because this is what table would expect us to have. So we use the linear property and we can take out a constant factor so we multiply and divide by 4 So it's the same denominator, s plus 2 squared plus 4 squared. And now we are ready to apply the inverse Laplace transform, a just final step towards the solution. So by applying inverse Laplace transform, we find a solution as a function of time. So again, th that's the result of a linear property and using the tables. So we got exponential times a trigonometric function. So that is the solution to that problem, which is nice, but it would be even nicer to plot it. We can actually have a graphical representation of that function. Let's look at the graph. So you have a factor which is getting small with time and also an oscillating factor. So if you look at this graph, you indeed see that it's a function which oscillates and then dies out. So that's a response of electric circuit to applying a constant potential difference at time zero. So it's switched on and then it relaxes to the uh, zero current. 